All right, guys, just a quickie today. As a reminder, make sure that any job, big or small, you're still making your shop right on. We're going mobile today, and let's go into why you should be charging more to go mobile if you're a shop-based business. If you're mobile-based, your rate should be higher to start with. All this crap we've had to load up for one little job. We're probably only gonna be on site for an hour. Never mind. As you can see from how dark it is outside, this video is actually gonna be about how a project can grow into something else. When I first met with the customer to go over this job, I poked the legs of these railings with the end of a screwdriver, felt solid metal at least on the outside of them, and determined that this was probably the sort of thing where we could slide a sleeve up inside the leg, drill a couple holes, do some plug welds, and re-weld our base plates back on, kind of making a leg inside a leg that would save the customer money because it's a quicker fix and they were looking for a budget-friendly option. The hope was that we'd be able to take these plates off and work on this not right on the ground but the bolts were completely rusted out so we set to trying to do our welding in place by removing any of the rust from the plates and the paint from the legs of these railings so that we'd be able to lay down a clean bead. What you don't see me doing on camera is sliding an inch and a quarter piece of square tubing inside this inch and a half square tube of the rails to make that sleeve. Then we set about trying to weld and pretty quickly it became evident that while the steel was still good on the outside of the railings, the entire inside was completely rusted away. So no matter how low of a voltage I went at this with, everything wanted to melt back. All right, that metal is 16 gauge wall inch and a half square tube and it's shot to hell, it's super rusted out. Uh, so we're gonna make the executive decision at our cost, because it's a good customer to just pop these off, take them back to the shop and completely redo those, those uh, bottom pieces. It's worth it to do it right, not have a customer upset, especially a good customer. Fortunately, this customer is pretty close to my shop, so we just ran back and picked the trailer up for ease of transport and then came back to remove the railings. What we ended up doing was just cutting through the anchor bolts at the foot on all of the railings Tommy's using a piece of cardboard to deflect the grinder sparks so we're not bothering the customers any more than we have to. We had asked the wait staff not to seat anybody outside, but there were still a couple people still finishing their meals from earlier. And eventually what we ended up doing was just taking a break for 15 minutes. The people looked like they were pretty close to being done with their meal, and it's worth it not to inconvenience your customers' customers. I have in the past been known to just invite people inside to the bar and buy them a drink because if I buy two people a $5 drink, it costs me 10 bucks, but if it saves me half an hour, it's probably worth it. So approach that however you feel. Your customers will appreciate you being conscientious of their customers. With all of the railings removed, we came back and cut all of the anchor bolts flush to the concrete. When we return with the railings, we're going to move all the railings down the sidewalk an inch, inch and a half, so we can drill into fresh concrete, fresh anchor bolts. It just isn't worth trying to salvage the ones that are there. You know, there's eight per railing, and if even one's bad, you know, it's a problem. So just move the railing a little bit, and the customer will appreciate that in the end. Once we were back to the shop, the process was just to remove whatever parts of the legs were rusted out. In most cases, that meant we went all the way up to the bottom rail of the actual gate structure. That's a more solid C-channel. And then we're going to slip a sleeve inside the legs and figure out what we need to do to duplicate that leg when we make a new one. Yeah, four inches. Nailed it! It's been a couple months now since Tommy's been taking on some more responsibilities around the shop, doing some more welding, and playing a bigger role in some of the projects we do. 
It's been nice. It's a force multiplier for me, of course. And whenever possible, I like to let Tommy take on a project himself and see how he comes at it because we might both learn something from it. He gets the satisfaction of kind of owning the project and um, I get an excuse to sit here and mess around with the drone while Tommy works. To that point, Tommy's cut off a section an inch and a half square tube at the miter saw, just put a 90 on it, and then by hand with a cutting wheel is going to match the angle he previously cut into the gate. We use an angle there for two reasons. One, it does lead to more weld area, and that diagonal that gets welded kind of stiffens everything up, especially with that sleeve inside, and then also it lets us get as much of the old steel removed and fresh new steel put in its place. So this is where the advantage of having Tommy trained up to do some of the welding comes in. We can divide and conquer. He's over here working on the gates and replacing the sections of legs that need replacing, shortening up the ones that the customer wanted shortened, and then I can go over to the plasma table and draw out and then cut new foot plates. We cut the holes into the plates and put the roundovers on the corner all at the table. Ended up making four of them. Each piece then got wire brushed just to clean off the little bit of dross that's left behind. And they were pretty much ready to go at that point. You can see the comparison there between how thick the old ones were. They're a little thicker than 10 gauge, probably 8 gauge. So I just jumped up to 3 sixteenths because that's the next thickest I had in stock and I'm sure the customer is not going to mind them being stronger and potentially lasting quite a bit longer. Only about half of the feet ended up needing replacing. The other ones, the posts were still in good shape, the feet were still in good shape, we're not going to mess with something, don't fix it if it's not broken. We just throw them up there on the mag chuck to hold it down and keep everything in place and wire brush it off to get ready for another coat of paint hopefully make it last another 20 years or however long these have been there. Initially this job was just to repair three broken foot plates but in the end we actually ended up replacing four. Uh, a couple of them were completely broken and a couple were you know pretty close so we just did it preemptively. In three of the four cases you couldn't really tell what caused the issue. It was probably paint wearing away over time and not being upkept but in one case, it was very obvious that water had been getting into the square tube because the tube was actually swollen. And that only really happens if you have water getting into the tube, standing there, and then freezing during the winter. It swells the tube up, starts breaking welds, and you're rusting the tube from the inside out, which was pretty much the case in all of them, so they all probably had some water intrusion. But regardless of why or how these became damaged, the process is pretty much the same. We're gonna slide that inch and a quarter sleeve in. If it's a spot where we either couldn't get the sleeve very far up into the tube or there was another reason we felt like it needed reinforcing, we'll drill some holes to plug weld through just to add a little bit more stability to the entire assembly. Grind the paint off next time, would be a good idea. Well, hey, you know what? I remembered to remove the paint on most of them. That's pretty good for me. With the welding pretty much done, it was a little bit of grinding to clean everything up, make it look pretty, and then we put a couple coats of fast drying paint on there. So let's jump over to install. The basic process here is we're gonna bring all the railings back put them into place where they need to be, and mark the holes to drill out. Then we'll move the railing and drill with an SDS right into the concrete so we can drive in some anchor bolts. These are redheads. They have like a barb that pops out when you tighten the nut down on the top of them. And when they're in the concrete, they're in the concrete. They're not coming out unless that concrete's bad. And they did a marvelous job of holding these things down. They're nice and sturdy now. So the big question is how do we deal with the billing on this? For me and my shop, our in-shop rate's $100 an hour. 
our mobile rate is 125 with a two hour minimum. So the customer was looking at a $250 bill no matter if we got this done in 20 minutes or it took the full two hours. And after seeing them and the condition that the railings were in, it just made more sense to bring them back to the shop and deal with the problem at the shop and then return them. That was made easier by how close they were, but even if it was a little bit more of a drive, we still would have done the same thing. So we have a shop rate of $100 an hour. It took us three and a half hours total to finish this. So they're looking at a, three, a bill of $350. If we had stayed in the field charging $125 an hour and it had pushed to three hours, we would have already been over that. You just, you're asking, why am I complaining about charging more? Well, I want my customer happy and I wanna charge them a fair rate for the work we're doing. They're getting a better product with it being done in the shop as well. You know, we're not repairing the foot plates that were there. They're getting all new anchor bolts. I'll go into the full breakdown on this over on Patreon with a bid breakdown. If you guys are interested in that, come check it out. If you don't like it, I'll even refund you your first month's Patreon contribution if you send me a message. That just about wraps this one up. I'm interested to hear you guys' opinions on how you'd bill for a job like this down in the comments. And until next time, thanks for stopping by.